Hello friend. Today I'm going to be demonstrating a technique I've picked up along the way for applying hot fix rhinestones to costumes. Normally this is done with an applicator which only lets you apply one stone of any size at a time. This technique will help you move through a project using a lot of stones of various sizes quickly. Furthermore, you don't have to wait for glue to dry and to keep uh, to work through a whole project. You don't have to wait for sections to set and then move on to the rest of your costume piece. If you're like me and you work right up until deadline, Hotfix rhinestones are ready to wear immediately. Please note in the video, I'm using cut pieces of fabric to demonstrate the technique. I don't normally do that. Normally I sew a whole costume up and then I apply the rhinestones because it's really hard to sew a bumpy costume that's loaded with rhinestones. So this was just to demonstrate the technique. I had pieces of fabric for a project already cut without any rhinestones, and that's what I used for the video. So sew before you put your rhinestones on. This is my preferred method for adding a adding an overall improvised splatter of sparkle to costumes. But I know that those of you who are doing uh, intricate patterns and designs will also find it useful. I'll be back at the end to go over some safety tips. Until then, enjoy the video. All right, so here's my basic setup. Obviously, the most important thing is to figure out how to keep an iron upside down and stable in your work area. Stable on the table. You can see here I've got it balanced between some books that come up just under the hot plate. There's a small box under the front to lift the nose, and it's backed up enough so that the cord hangs straight down and out of the way. I know that iron looks terrible, but it's got five years at least of rhinestone residue on it, so I also don't recommend that you use the same iron for your clothes as you do for rhinestoning. And here I have my fabric. I'm working on an ear today. I've got some 20 SS rhinestones, a champagne cork, and a sturdy stainless steel sewing needle. I also keep a pair of tweezers around in case I need to pick anything up off the hot surface of the iron. This iron is ready to go. It's on high and there's no water in it. Steam is turned off and I'm just going to start laying stones upside down on the iron, kind of navigating between those old burnt spots. And when it gets too bad, I'll just turn the iron on for a while, heat it up, and scrub the burnt. I'll scrub as much as the burnt stuff off as I can, but it's really not a problem once it gets once it's been on there for a while. I prefer to work with a regular iron instead of a nonstick iron because if you don't get the iron exactly level, those rhinestones will just slide right off. So here we go. I'm just waiting for the glue to melt. It foams up, then goes clear, and then you're ready to apply. You just uh a light touch with the needle, flip it over, press it down with the cork, and pull out the needle. That's it. Stick, flip, press, and pull over and over again. So meditative, so calming, so relaxing. I don't recommend that you put too many rhinestones on your iron at one time because the glue can get too hot and it does burn and turn brown and you really don't want to put that down on your fabric. Also the glue gets a little bit liquidy and harder to handle with the point of a pin. So that's basically how you apply hot rhinestones without burning your fingers. You use the champagne cork to protect yourself from those hot, hot rhinestones. In my opinion, this method also gives you extra added protection because you never have to bring the hot tip of the 
applicator, rhinestone applicator to your project. Um, if you've ever seen one of those rhinestone applicators, they also get loaded with residue and sometimes the jewels start to stick in. And I think this method is a little bit easier to work cleaner and just keep anything hot and plugged in away from your precious fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and load up for the other side. And there, there it is. You can see one of the rhinestones went glue side down. Just going to pick it off, move it to the side, and as I continue working, avoid that area of the iron. And I'll just wipe it off later. Another advantage to this technique is that if you ever need an excuse to go out and buy a bottle of champagne, it's because you needed the cork for rhinestoning. And the last one, plug a needle into your cork and admire your work. Amazing. Oh, it's my right ear. If you look, you can see where the fabric has been dimpled from the stones really being pressed down. Nice and secure in the stretch. Sometimes you do get a, a little tail, like a little plastic tail from the glue. You can just pick that off. It's usually no problem. Nobody's going to see that from the balcony anyway. They're just going to see how gorgeous and sparkly you are. Et voila! A few safety tips before you go off rhinestoning into the future. When you get the idea in your head to sit down and do some bedazzling, put a little note on yourself that says iron, or go ahead and hang it on the front door so you don't burn the house down. Also in the video, you saw that I was working right on top of the structure I used to stabilize the iron. I don't recommend that. I only did that to get a tight shot to show everything that I was doing in frame in the video. Normally I work a little bit away from that whole thing because you don't want a hot iron falling on you. You don't want a hot iron and hot rhinestones falling on your project. So work a little bit away from your iron station. Lastly, the glue on the back of the rhinestones can smell after a while. And if you get any on your iron, it's going to burn. So I highly recommend working with a mask or at least with open windows, just lots of ventilation. And after you're done, air the place out. That's it for now. Click the subscribe button, leave me a comment below, and I'll see you back here real soon. Thanks for watching and don't burn the house down.